Welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group. Uh, let's look at the agenda and uh, go through our topics for the day. So we've got open action items, Google Summer of Code 2020 custom Jenkins build service discussion. Uh, yeah, uh, this is an action. Uh, this is a topic I added uh, yesterday after okay. the discussion uh, with Sladen. I believe because Sladen asked for another session. Uh, and I suggest that uh, if he's fine, we will just do it at the platform seat meeting. Great. Since uh, there is no Sladen here, I suppose we can just keep it. And uh, I'll probably organize a separate session next week. All right. Okay. And yeah, for whomever is interested, uh, there is also um, another project uh, related to Windows Service Wrapper and YAML support there. And we plan to have a dedicated discussion next week for that. Uh, that is pending with Google. So, uh, the, sorry, say the other one again was Windows Service Wrapper, is that right? Yes. Okay, all right. Yeah, I'm just uh, trying to find uh, an email with the links. But yeah, it's in the JSOC uh, seek. It's not in the platform seek. Ah, okay. I'll probably forward uh, the invitation after the meeting. Super, thank you. All right. I could spell. All right. Then we had, in addition, uh, HTTPS and, and HTTP2 support with Jetty and Jenkins. So like that you had supported yesterday, we might discuss here. I put it on the agenda, not sure what the, the topics are, but propose we have it on the agenda. Let's use this, this time, capture some notes and discuss. Yeah, so why I put that, um, that historically we didn't use HTTPS support uh, from JT. Uh, because uh, our default recommendation in the Jenkins project was uh, to use um, external uh, service uh, to do HTTPS sync. Uh, but now, de facto, many users use uh, features provided by JT because uh, they are exposed in uh, Jenkins command line uh, by Winston. So anybody is able uh, to enable HTTPS, uh, provide certificates, and get them working. And it was one of the major regressions we had uh, in a 2.204.3 uh, because uh, we missed that uh, build card certificates were not longer supported. And since we had exactly zero test automation for HTTPS mode, and it basically uh, went and tested straight into LCS. Now, there is a developer mailing list with retrospective. Uh, the situation with HTTP2 is basically similar. Uh, JT provides uh, this option, you can enable it in Jenkins. Uh, but uh, we have no test automation at the moment, and we have no official documentation which will stay whether it state whether it's supported or not. So for me, for both two options, uh, the strategy would be that uh, yes, we would like to make uh, this support official. But in order to do so, we need to do some investment uh, so that uh, we can uh, really provide some test coverage for these options. Okay, so the, so the, and you've described my preference as well, then the challenge is we have to find someone who can help with, we have to find people who are willing to contribute tests to cover that for HTTPS and HTTP2, great. That's right. All right. So this test uh, uh, should be ideally implemented on a Winston level so that uh, we discover issues uh, when the upgrade happen because yeah one of the major issue in uh, one of the major causes of recent progressions uh, was that uh, we got them from JT and we didn't really test uh, the things on the Winston level so uh, and then uh, we didn't test them on the Jenkins score level but it would be better to have tests early so that we know that JT upgrades uh, break something and we need to adjust. That makes sense. Okay, better so better to test in Windstone mm -hmm. uh, with some form of, of checks there. Yeah. In addition to test coverage, it would require some documentation. Uh, 
uh, for users. Maybe some support in uh, Docker images uh, because uh, you need to uh, go through additional hoops if you want to enable the options. And uh, yeah, if we uh, decide that it's officially supported more, uh, then uh, we should probably uh, have a easy way to enable them in Docker. Right, okay. Yeah. And there was a kind of joke, which is probably, uh, deserves a serious discussion uh, later. It's about uh, in, uh, using HTTPS and Jenkins by default. So discouraging use of HTTP there. Uh, but yeah, it's a complex problem uh, and it's definitely not in the scope for the initial steps uh, related to HTTPS support. Right, but, but it is, yeah, I, I can see how it seems, at least to me, to be worth considering because um, hey, we ship secure by default at the password level, why should we allow sniffing of sniffing of content? Good, okay. Well, the, the, the problem there is certificates, right? Right, yeah. It's it, certificates, you'd get a bunch of warnings in mm -hmm. browsers and stuff like that. So that's, that's the harder thing about doing HTTPS by default. Yeah, I was assuming we'd, we'd do attempt something with Let's Encrypt and, Acme to try to talk them and talk to them, ask them to grant us a certificate. But I guess that's probably dreaming, isn't it? Well, the problem that it would be users who have to set up their own certificates. Right. It's not us. And yeah, I can imagine how we could do it automatic in an automatic way with Let's Encrypt uh, for connected instances. But yeah. since Jenkins has been uh, installed in isolated environments, uh, it would be a bit more challenging there. So, uh, doing HTTPS in a related environment, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, it's a subject for long-term discussion, and uh, definitely there is no way we disable uh, and remove HTTP mode support. Right. Because there are external uh, um, uh, services which provide HTTP to many users and uh, removing this use case isn't something you would like to consider. Maybe. Great. Okay. Anything else on HTTPS and HTTP2? Alex, what would be your perspective there? I think the, the biggest thing we're looking at is increasing our testing on these, isn't it? Right now? So I, I think uh, I I need to look at the, the the issues that came up and see if I can understand a little bit better what happened fully, so I can have a little bit better uh, idea of what to recommend. But I I think our our test cases should at least be increased to catch something like what we had happen in this these directions at, at a bare minimum. Yeah. Well, JC Eglick has already uh, added a smoke test for HTTPS, but mm -hmm. yeah, definitely one smoke test is not enough. So we can uh, give you more options. And so that smoke test has been added to Winstone or to, to Jenkins? Uh, Winstone. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, testing it on the Jenkins level uh, is less than trivial. Because yeah, if you want to test the HTTPS, you either create mock certificates and uh, using uh, HTML uh, unit for that uh, is probably not appropriate. So it would uh, go to acceptance test harness, to proper integrations there, to running Jenkins in the container and connecting to that. All of that is doable. All of that uh, requires some time investment. Right, okay. So ideally, I would like to run all existing web UI tests in both HTTP and HTTPS mode so that we uh, get the initial test coverage. Uh, but yeah, it's a useful thinking right now. Yeah, see, for me, that that seems like that, would, that almost feels excessive to me just because the 
seems like those things should be protocol independent, whether you're HTTP or HTTPS. Are there cases where they haven't been protocol independent? Mm, uh, so, yeah, theoretically everything should be uh, protocol independent. Okay. Uh, yeah, but uh, theoretically it doesn't mean that uh, JT works that way with right. HTTPS. Um, so when you start form submissions, you may discover, for example, that for HTTP you get one uh, form size limit, for HTTPS you get another one. Uh, for HTTP2 is, it's even more risky because HTTP2 is implemented by a digital library um, in JT. Mm. So uh, this is the things you need to keep in mind. Uh, we are well equipped uh, to run such kind of tests because when we're working on customer packages, when we're working on session and session, sorry, essential test framework, uh, which is basically evergreen uh, test framework, uh, we included uh, opportunity to run existing tests with customized uh, Jenkins versions. It was uh, the whole point of customer packager in the first uh, implementations. So you can package everything, you can include configuration as code and system properties, which will enable HTTPS by default. So you can run, uh, for example, Git plugin tests uh, with uh, HTTPS using this framework. Uh, well, I guess it's not uh, that easy when you try to implement that, uh, but it should be possible right now. You just need to implement these pipelines. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, anything else, Alex or Oleg? Not on that topic now. Okay. All right. Last topic on my list was PowerPC sixty four and Series three ninety status report. Um, uh, I've actually been running the both of them agents on uh, PowerPC 64 and on Series 390 uh, from my CI server at home, um, and it works great. Uh, they work great. They run tests. Uh, they've run the tests of the Git client, the Git plugin, the platform labeler general purpose test jobs all seem to be holding up well. Um, I did learn that um, it is quite important for performance to run uh, uh, OpenJ9 on S390. It performs much more reasonably than if you run the open JDK that is bundled with the operating system. The operating system bundled JDK is interpretive mode only, no JIT. Operating system uh, open JDK is, has no JIT, interpreted only, and it is slow. Any questions there? Or Alex, have you been using, doing anything with PowerPC or Series 390? No, I have not. But I was okay. just wondering, so, um, so it's only OpenJ9 basically that we can use on there? Uh, the, uh, the Jim had said that adopt OpenJDK, um, said that ad adopt OpenJDK, also has um, has JIT enabled. Uh, I didn't spend a lot of time yeah. checking that. Yeah, keep in mind that uh, there are two distributions of Adopt Open GDK because okay. Adopt Open GDK includes uh, Hotspot uh, and uh, Open G9 engines, and these are uh, separate distributions you can download. So yeah. when uh, Jim said that, I believe it's related on the Open G9 engine. Ah, okay. See, that was the that was the spot that I I must have misunderstood. I thought you had said that, okay, the adopt the ad open JDK uh, definitely has no JIT, it, it, and and that I've observed, and I've seen that Open J nine performs quite reasonably. So I I think it must have JIT involved. Uh, yeah. So it's not a hotspot in your 
Bitcoin, it's uh, Open G9. At least they believe so. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, we still need, in terms of other things, we still need uh, the the final PowerPC configuration. Yeah, no, in fact, oh, like, so on that one, I intentionally, oh, you're putting that in as a question to investigate? Yeah, because yeah. if you assume it was hotspot, uh, yeah, I'm not sure about that. And, and nor am I, because my observation was, and that, that I think is correct, um, I know that the Adopt Open JDK, Open J9 does, and I know that Open JDK does not, and the test is for is hotspot. So agreed, absolutely. Uh, then we still need the final PowerPC 64 LE configuration. It's currently using a an SSG, SSH jump host, uh, which is um, it's rather complicated to manage. Manage as a Jenkins agent. I can give you the instructions on how it's done. It was, I found them on a page. It's, we launch the agent with a command on the master, uh, rather than using the, uh, using the SSH agent plugin. And that means then that we have to, must approve a uh, system script through script security. And uh, that approval is not supported by, uh, by JCASC. Mm, yeah. so you mean, uh, so JCASC now uh, supports uh, script security? It does, okay. yeah, but unfortunately, it doesn't support that aspect of script security. At least yeah, I haven't so found a way to make it work. It definitely uh, works for uh, uh, method invocation work, at least. Right. I have never checked system script because uh, system script implementation of script security is quite weird mm. because it basically approves hashes of scripts. So I believe that as long as you provide the proper cache, uh, hash in uh, JCASC, uh, it will work. Uh, yeah, but I you will need to somehow get this proper hash. Well, and, and I've, I've certainly approved pipeline scripts with a hash, and those do work in JCASC. This mm -hmm. thing is somehow different, and I can't even find the keyword necessary to, to tell it to approve the script. Okay, so maybe it wasn't supported. Yeah, so, but I'm not sure it actually should be supported because I don't think we really want long term to use to require a system level script to run an SS, to run an agent. This thing should be supported through an SSH agent, just like all the other agents. So, Olivier is also, as far as I understand, working on the uh, uh, steps to include in include on ci.jenkins.io. Any questions there? No. All right, Alex. Any other topics from you? Um, just from the ARM64 front, at least. Um, so we're getting AWS. We have AWS credits. And they have their Graviton instances, which are ARM64. So I'll be looking into um, ARM64 there. Ah, great. All right. Mm -hmm. I wonder whether our sponsorship includes F1. What was that? F1 is FPGs uh, as a service. Ah, 
I can barely provide any reasonable use case for CI Jenkins IO, but uh, <laughs> if you get uh, the sponsorship, I will uh, definitely try to come up with something. Right, right. But your hardware, but the, your heart of heart of hardware suddenly got, gets pumping and the blood starts flowing, and you thought, oh, that could be interesting. I'll fight. Yeah, uh, cool. I didn't know about FPGA as a service. That sounds that sounds interesting. Yeah, we had a, a student um, in the FOSI Foundation this year who implemented uh, some uh, delivery pipelines for projects uh, using F1. Well, it wasn't powered by Jenkins, but the concept can be adjusted to Jenkins as well. So at least it could be good as a case study and maybe as a demo. Okay. Yeah, definitely not in the top of my priority list. All right. Any anything else on ARM sixty four, Alex or Oleg? Nothing from you. No, nothing else. All right. I think we have concluded all of the topics that we had on the agenda. If if there's nothing else, I propose we call an end to this meeting. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Oleg. Thank you. Thanks, and I'll host them. I'll save the save the the recording and talk to you in two weeks.